Hello, welcome to this week's How's the Market, Pensacola. Listen, to start the show off this week, I'm actually gonna take you to another video that I did. I was explaining this to other real estate agents about how the 10-year treasury yield impacts mortgage rates because it is very, very specific for buyers and sellers to understand how the market is changing. So I thought that would be a really good lesson to begin this particular week's episode. Let's go take a look at that. All right, so I wanted to kind of show you this real quick. Um, this is the 10-year treasury yield and what it's looked like for the last couple of decades. If you look, I think we're starting in like 62 on this one. We had the 80s where we had that big um, inflation era and the 10-year treasury yield got up to almost 15% here and it actually creeped up over 16 for a little bit um, or right under 16, excuse me. Uh, then we bubbled up, but I wanted to kind of show you this because a lot of people are, are not paying attention back to the 80s. They're like, well, that changed. Our, our economy is drastically changing. You are right, but let's talk about the early 2000s. If you look at the early 2000s, the 10-year treasury yield floated between 4 and 5%, all right? You may have creeped down to 3-something every once in a while, and right here, 3.37, all right? But for the most part, we were in the 4s and 5s in the treasury yield. Now, we're looking here, Treasury yield June 22nd of last year was 0.64. Treasury yield August 17th last year is 0.64%. So when I talked about a couple of weeks ago, it jumping back over one, I was trying to prove a point. This says 1.2, but it says February 8th. As we sit here talking and recording this late February, it is 1.34 to 1.38. That is the Treasury yield. Now, let's take a look at how mortgage rates correlate with that. Look, the chart should look familiar. Early 70s here, this is that inflation spike. Look at that. 1981, the average mortgage rate was 16.64. Can you imagine getting a 30-year fix and paying 16.64? How much house could you buy? Probably nowhere near what you could buy right now. But what I wanted to bring up was this right here. Look, the average rate in 2003, 5.83, 5.84. 5.87. I owned a mortgage company during these times. And I remember in 2006 when we had six and a half and that was really good. You got six and a half percent, man. That was a really good rate. Really, really good rate. And we've done a ton of real estate that way. And of course there was a misconception that real estate will always go up and the, and some people were buying and getting these rates for investment properties. And that's a whole different video and a whole different training that I do uh, talking about cash flow only. But right now, look at this. So this correlation's here. Now we jump down, this chart only takes me to 2019 where it says the average rate's 4.25. Last year it was in the threes. Even saw some rates in the high twos. And people are getting concerned now that rates are going to have to rise. Well, they have to. They absolutely have to because these two correlate. The safest investment out there is the 10-year treasury yield. For this backed by the full faith and confidence of the United States government. But when that rises, the next thing that people put money into that is considered fairly safe is fixed rate mortgage backed securities. It has to rise. That's why these two charts correlate. So now that we're seeing the 10 year treasury rise, our mortgage rates going to have to follow. They absolutely are. And we're already seeing that. So if that's the case, all right, and do I think we're going to get back to 16 something? No. Do I think we get back here to the early 2000s fairly soon? Yeah. Fours, fives, and sixes. Those are going to be your average rates. So if somebody's buying, that's going to be less buyable. Meaning that you can buy less of a property. You can spend less because you're spending more in interest. So you're going to qualify for less. So sellers need to pay attention to this as well as buyers because your buyer pool may shrink if rates continue to rise. So in this low inventory area, I'm telling buyers anything they can. If they can lock in and get into these threes, get them. Because we could see fours soon. All right, so hopefully you understand now the correlation between the treasury yield and the fact that it is continuing to climb means mortgage rates are going to have to follow. They just have to. That's the where money flows. So if I can get 1.34% in a treasury yield backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government, why would I take the risk of doing mortgage-backed securities instead in order to get that extra bump, in order to take that extra risk, I need to be paid more. That's what institutional investors are gonna do all day long. So in order to get that, they have to raise rates in order to pay the investors back. So you saw the correlation from the decades. All right, that is really going to impact us 
soon. Do I think it's going to be in the next week? No. No. But you're going to start seeing that flow. Part of the reason I do this entire show is to document what's happening in the market so you can go back and look. All right. But it's also to forward look for the buyers. Pull the trigger if you can. All right. Pull the trigger if you can. I know it's frustrating out there with inventory. I get it. But pull the trigger if you can because the good times rolling like we normally do in Mardi Gras might not roll for all that much longer do i think like i said do i think we're going to see those 16 percent anytime soon no but could we get back to the early 2000s faster than most are thinking maybe maybe so all right enough lessons for that let's talk about our two counties let's go seen the show then you know that I always start off with this slide right here it says if we have between six and seven months inventory we have what's called a neutral market anything greater than seven months is considered a buyer's market anything less than six months is considered a seller's market what the slide does not say anything greater than nine months is considered a hyper buyer's market anything less than three months considered a hyper seller's market can you tell I've said that once or twice let's take a look at our two counties we're gonna start off in a Scambia County um, and if you noticed the last couple of weeks this 500 to 550 range was a seller's it wasn't a hyper seller's but we've dropped an inventory there we've dropped an inventory there and so basically everything is a hyper seller's market except for luxury 650 and above uh, 650 to 700 is 3.5 months worth of inventory and anything over seven months is 4.2, which has been steady dropping. If you go back and watch the last couple of weeks in Escambia County, that creeped up to 5.5, 5.6. I was talking about that might even hit a neutral market soon, but it looks like it's continuing to drop inventory level wise. So everything in Escambia County is a seller's or a hyper seller's. Let me back up. If I haven't, if you've never seen the show and you don't know what I'm talking about right now, on the left hand side is actually the prices, on the right hand side is the month's inventory. So that is Escambia County. Let me get over to Santa Rosa County real quick. Look, everything over there is still, still, still a hyper seller's market. There is nothing between zero and 50,000, zero. And this 150 to 250 mark, and actually you can say 150 all the way to 300. Man, there's nothing. 0.2 months, 0.2 months, 0.5 months, 0.6 months. And just like I have said the last couple of shows, the other thing that the buyers need to pay attention to is what stuff is selling at. It's selling at 100% list, 99% list, 100% list. Now, I know we're going to get up here and somebody's going to mention something on one of the shows going, Shane, I'm looking at your list here, but that 50 to 100 looks like it sold between 90 and 94. Yeah, there was one property that sold at a discount. So they listed it here. It's in horrible shape. I know the property. It needs a bunch of rehab work. And so they negotiated down. Cool. That's great. So that because it's one is going to show a percentage a lot lower than others. These are more than one. But if you can look, there's only 197 properties active in Santa Rosa County total. Total. All right. If you get between 50 and 100, you got one property to look at. 150, 100 to 150. Go back and look at the last couple of shows. There's been five and it's been sitting because those properties are in bad, bad shape. And until somebody can come in with the right eye and go, okay, this is what it's gonna to take to rehab it. And I don't know anything about the sellers. So I don't know their motivation. They may be holding on to it going, you know what? There's nothing out there, so we've got the ball. Play our game or we'll just wait. But it may take a rehab loan to get these done, all right? And so until people can understand that you can roll part of that in, well, those properties may sit, but there's just nothing. There really is nothing. Look, between 150 and 200,000, there's eight properties. Between 200,000 and 250,000, there's 15 properties. The biggest section of properties in Santa Rosa County is between 350 and 400, and that is 38 properties, and the majority of that is made up by new builds, meaning builders putting in. So they'll put something active, but they'll put the floor plan active. They'll sell three or four of that floor plan, but that floor plan will stay active here. 
that is the biggest um, inventory in Santa Rosa County is 350 to 400. The 250 to 300 being next with a total of 35 properties. I mean, look at this, 258 properties under contract. And you wonder why it's 100% of list price. When I talk to my sellers, I go over this. When I talk to my buyers, I go over this. I don't just go over this on the show, but I've been going over this for years with buyers and sellers, and I just bring up some highlights here on the show so that you guys in YouTube land and Facebook land can actually understand what's happening in the market, at least on a macro level. And then if we want to dive into the particular neighborhoods, I do the same type searches. Anyways, if you're looking at doing anything in the next 12 months, give me a call. Shoot me a message. I got a couple of uh, uh, DMs. Uh, the other day on YouTube, it was direct messages on YouTube, uh, asking just some specific questions. I got a couple on Facebook asking some specific questions. There were specific neighborhoods, something popped up, and so um, I think both of those were on a foreclosure that just happened. And I was talking with an agent, and I'll, I'll mention this as we wrap up, I was talking with an agent who did a lot of foreclosures this past week. He did, he did a ton of foreclosures back in the day. Okay, and I asked him, I said, hey, I've seen a couple of foreclosures popping up. What are you seeing? What's your insight? He said a lot of those are one or two banks that have been holding on to these properties for years. So they forced closed on them 14, 13, 12, 11, and have literally been renting them out, waiting on the market. And so now they've rode that appreciation up and they will liquidate very, very slowly. But because they own it as a foreclosure, they have to list it because Florida is a disclosure state which means the law says anything that materially impacts the value of the property must be disclosed. The fact that they obtain the deed through a foreclosure means that when you go to sell it, it has to be a foreclosure. But somebody's been living there for years. They've been renting the place for years, just like any other landlord. But because it was foreclosed, then it was listed as foreclosure. So again, watch your headlines. Watch your headlines, because there's always a story behind it. But if you're looking at doing anything in the next couple of months, give me a shout. There's a couple of guides right behind here. I've actually linked them up so that you can take a look at those too. I try and give you everything we can for free and then let's just chat. Let's just chat if I can figure out and help you do what you want to do, great. If I can't, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll be straightforward with you and tell you, nope, now is not the time. I had that exact conversation over this past weekend. Guy called me up, said, hey, I'm looking at selling my house, been watching your show for a bit. Here's the price point. And he was in that 400 to 450 price point. I want to sell at that price point. Um, and I went and ran his comps and his comps came in at about 410 but he said he would not take anything under 500. And I said, we can push, but that's too high right now. He said, well, I don't have to sell. I said, good, don't, don't, because there's a taxable event there anyways. It's an investment property. Um, so if it's if we're not gonna 1031 exchange, which he didn't, he wanted to actually take the cash out, I said, your, your taxable event doesn't make any sense. I'm not an accountant, I'm not an attorney, Although I've played both on TV, I have neither one of those in real life. And so I tell people, go talk to your accountant, but I understand the basics of recapitalization, recapture of depreciation and appreciation tax laws. So those are real simple to actually look up and I can send links to anybody that needs to take a look at that. That needs to play a decision, especially if you owned a, real, a rental property for a while. Um, but we're getting into more specifics, not there. If you're doing, looking at doing anything in the next 12, give me a shout. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'm a man on a mission. My mission is to help people break through all the noise out there. And Don't need no permission. I want to help you get to actual truth. Don't you just want the truth?